it was quite busy. Speaking of busy, tomorrow will be a busy one because it's back to the routine, back to school, a lot of yeah. back to work for a lot of people. And it's going to be messy. It is. It's going to be not messy. That's the last thing we, we kind of need. You yeah. know, it, was, it was nice to have quiet, at least weather for travel folks coming home to yes. Ohio over the last couple of days compared to Christmas. But, you know, tomorrow we're back at it. And as you mentioned, Laura, some heavy rain moving in for that morning rush hour. The other element of this is the warmth. Warm January days. We don't get many of them. By warm, I mean eh, over 60 degrees or so. I was going back in time and, you know, this year, tomorrow looks to be one of those, but it looks like we get one of these about every three years or so. Back in 2020, we had a 70 degree January day, three years prior, 65, four years prior, 64, five years before that, 65. So we don't get them every year, but tomorrow, and it happens to be three years after the last time we did it, it looks like we're going to get some warmth around here. How warm are we thinking? Well, the yellow numbers are forecasted high. You notice low to mid 60s area wide. That's tough to do this time of year. The, the white number is your record. So Cleveland, we're going to come close to it. I think we break the record. Mansfield, Akron, New Philadelphia, even Youngstown. A very warm spring-like day out ahead of us tomorrow. But we've got the rain component. We've got the fog component tonight laying on thick. Dense fog advisory goes through three. Uh, remember, fog doesn't have borders, so just because you're not in it doesn't mean it's not foggy, and it doesn't really abide by time. So just 3 a.m. is not when it all magically disappears. We're still going to have that dense fog around, and it's laying on thick. Trumbull County, you get down towards 76, areas of 71 once you get south of Medina, some thick fog. Even out in Elyria right now and towards the Norwalk community, seeing some thicker fog over what you've seen this evening. That stretches all the way back down towards Chicago, and that's all because we've got warm, humid air. This is literally a Gulf of Mexico air mass that's moving north, and you're going to feel it tomorrow. We're going to have dew points tomorrow. Remember, we use that number in the summertime to indicate how humid it feels. We always say when it gets above 60, you can feel the air. You're sweating. Tomorrow, our dew point's going to be up near 60. That's incredible for this time of year, the amount of moisture coming north. All that moisture gets thrown into the cold air, which is now in the Dakotas, Minnesota. They're expecting a pretty decent snow out of this. But here's the warm front still south of us. Again, we got the fog on the northern end. We've got severe weather on the southern end of this. These storms are what we're watching. We don't get the stormy part of this, but we get the rainy part. So these storms billow up 30, 40,000 feet in the atmosphere. They produce the rain, and that rain carries its way all the way to northeast Ohio. Pretty decent slug of it now. Areas of southern Illinois, more rain coming in from the Arkansas area. All this is heading into our neck of the woods for that morning rush hour. So tomorrow's forecast, it's the morning that we get wet. Rain and heavy at times. It will be spring-like. We'll be in the mid and upper 50s tomorrow morning. But by afternoon and evening, the rain becomes more scattered. Not expecting much rain at all after about the early afternoon time. And we're going to be warm tomorrow evening in the 60s. So, you know, maybe you got a new barbecue set for Christmas. Tomorrow might be a good afternoon and evening to use it. We'll still have spotty showers. That's it. National Design Mart Hour Buyer Forecast. Here comes the moisture. This is the latest model run in now, bringing in a pretty heavy load initially, four, five, six o'clock in the morning. Ponding of water on roadways. Not expecting a lot of flooding from this. Our ground could still use some water. We had a dry fall, but still, we're going to have a lot of water in a hurry tomorrow. Notice by 11, still dealing with rain, and there's your scattering. We should make it up, I think, low to mid-60s here. I think numbers are underachieving. That's 5 o'clock, so not a bad afternoon. Stray showers, that's it. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock at night, we're still near 60. Wednesday, waking up, we're still near 60. It stays mild. The cold front hasn't come in yet as we get it into Wednesday. Here's your cold front chance with more rain. Temps come down after that. And eventually we'll start to clear things out in terms of rainfall. We're talking over an inch again. This is going to cause short term problems, especially for that morning rush hour. What happens after that system goes by? We do have cold air back behind this. A little signal for some snow in here on Thursday into Friday. Doesn't look like a whole lot. Temperature is going to be a little bit above freezing as well. This is the system I want to watch Saturday. The Euro paints some pretty decent snow across our neck of the woods. GFS doesn't have this. The GEM, which is a Canadian model, has it further south. So we'll keep an eye on that system for you. That may bring a little accumulating snow if it verifies, but that's going to be something that will change next couple days. Union Hill Mortgage 10-day forecast. There's your downfall after two mild days. My goodness, we're back down into the 30s to near 40 degrees with various snow chances, but no real cold air. There are some signals, Laura. That later on this month, mid to late month, is when we get that cold air back. But until then, steady as she goes. All right, we'll take it. Matt, thanks. Coming